morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on, or good evening, even, depending on when you uh, uh, are looking at this. I wanted to go over something real quickly, and it actually kind of relates more to uh, some of my colleagues at school. Uh, in the pro I'm in a respiratory program right now, and I did a case study yesterday, and somebody had asked a question about oxygen, <clears throat> specifically why... Uh, we are concerned about high high amounts, high levels of oxygen exposure, or or exposing our patients to high FiO2s or fraction fractions of an inspired oxygen, high partial pressures, and so on. And I made a really bold statement uh, about oxygen that I just kind of wanted to qualify and perhaps even quantify somewhat today. And, and the statement I said is that oxygen is nothing more than a garbage truck. It's an intracellular garbage truck. And certainly that kind of um, uh, perhaps took people uh, by surprise. And the, the analogy I, I still think is a good one. Again, you know, I'm not, I'm not an inherently intelligent person, so I often when I have to encounter difficult concepts, and there are certainly some difficult concepts in the sciences, uh, I attempt to kind of put a classical twist to those concepts, if you will, and I take things in my day-to-day -day life and I try to try to sort of make an analogy. So I'll try to explain why I made the garbage truck analogy, and, and hopefully it'll make a little more sense. So first of all, we got to ask the question: Well, why do we use oxygen? Um, what is is a more technical definition or, or, or technical reason why? Well, let's just talk about first of all how are, how we make energy. Specifically, how um, eukaryotic organisms make energy uh, for the most part, with the exception of red blood cells and some other cases, um, we, we really have three processes that need to occur. Um, so, if you can imagine that this is a cell here, it could be a muscle cell, a neuron, well, whatever kind of cell, other than a red blood cell, they, they're a little special. And within this, this cell, we know that there's a, a little organelle called, called a mitochondria. And we often say, uh, simplistically, that the mitochondria is a quote-unquote powerhouse of the cell that makes all the energy. Yes and no. Let's just talk about this. First of all, what is the primary source of energy? Well, the primary source of energy in, in, in eukaryotic organisms like us is going to be glucose, specifically the D form of glucose, um, which is uh, C6H12O6, and that's glucose. Uh, obviously, you have some hydrogens, oxygens that flip around a little bit to form DNL. But anyway, so glucose comes into the cell, and you have insulin and all that stuff. And and I won't really talk about that. I'll try to keep this simple and intuitive. And you have the first process that occurs to uh, glucose called glycolysis. And we know that glycolysis produces just a little bit of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and that, that really is the fuel for our body. Um, we break break down a phosphate bond and the release of energy is actually what runs a lot of our, our cellular processes. And we know that we make about two ATP from glycolysis, but we actually use one to run glycolysis, so we have a net of one molecule of ATP uh, per, per uh, cycle of glycolysis. Certainly not really great, can't meet our cell's energy requirements. Well, what comes out of glycolysis is a molecule called pyruvic acid. And the pyruvic acid then has to go into another cycle. Uh, so all of this is actually anaerobic metabolism. I'm not using oxygen here at all. Um, this works regardless of whether or not I have oxygen glycolysis. Now the pyruvic acid then goes into another cycle within the mitochondria itself. And you guys are probably somewhat familiar with this. This is the Krebs cycle. Uh, K-R-E-B-S after Dr. Krebs. Uh, okay, also the citric acid cycle, and uh, there is the tricarboxylic acid cycle as well, and that's a little more advanced. We talk about carboxylic acids and cleaving carboxyl groups off of, um, but well, off of uh, uh, the pyruvic acid, or or actually what happens is the pyruvic acid comes in and it's turned into acetyl-CoA A into the Krebs cycle, and then acetyl-CoA is broken down further. Now we don't really make a whole lot of energy in the Krebs cycle. Most people. For whatever reason, when I ask people, they always say, oh, we make all of our energy in the Krebs cycle. That's not really the case. What happens is, you see there are lots of hydrogens in, in glucose, 
and certainly lots of hydrogens in the acetyl-CoA that comes from the pyruvic acid. And what happens in the Krebs cycle is we cleave off those hydrogens, we cut those hydrogens off, those hydrogen atoms, and those hydrogen atoms uh, are then attached to transport molecules called NAD and FAD. And those transport molecules bring the hydrogens over to another cycle. And that other cycle is called the electron transport system, the electron transport chain. Sometimes we call it oxidative, because we have oxygen, phosphorylation, because we're adding a phosphate group to ADP to make ATP. And what I'm going to do is, because there's actually a much better picture than I could ever draw of this, this cycle, this, um, uh, this electron transport chain, we'll call it. And this is from uh, Human Anatomy and Physiology, 4th edition, so it's a little on the old side. I think this was 12, 13 years ago when I, um, boy, maybe even more than that, when I took a Anatomy and Physiology, but not a whole lot has changed. And so here we have a picture, and I hope that comes up. Um, so what we have is we have these hydrogens uh, being deposited here, and we're tearing the electron off the hydrogen, and we're putting the hydrogens up, uh, the hydrogen ions, the protons up here, and then the electron goes through this chain here. Now, what I'll try to do is I'll try to simplify that somewhat if I can. And uh, so what we have is we have a membrane here. And in the membrane you have proteins called cytochromes. <coughs> and what happens is the NAD and the FAD comes over here. And the electron is torn off the hydrogen. Hydrogen ions now, protons, go up here. And then the electron cascades down this chain here. Well, cascades down here, we'll say. And the energy of that electron, because, you know, electron's moving, it has energy, it kind of helps run these proteins. And then what we do is we build up protons, and we have a gradient. A lot here, not a whole lot here, and we have, we have something called proton motive force. The hydrogen ions then travel through a protein channel here at the end called ATP uh, synthase. And it powers that channel and allows ADP uh, to become ATP, the attached of uh, a phosphate group to the ADP. Well, what do we have left over from all this stuff going on? We have electrons, we have hydrogen ions, and we have all this waste accumulating here, basically. It's just waste of, of energy production. How do we get rid of that? And here comes oxygen, right here at, um, I believe this is called cytochrome C oxidase. And oxygen comes along, and of course, hydrogen and electron can, you know, become a hydrogen atom again. And, and what really is, is the outcome of hydrogen and oxygen? Well, H2O, right? And water molecule. And that's how we get rid of all these electrons and all of these protons, is by basically combining them with oxygen, because oxygen is highly electronegative. Um, it likes those electrons. We make water molecules, and we can keep this running. That's why we need oxygen to keep this running. And that's why I made that analogy that oxygen really comes in, and it's kind of like a garbage truck. It gets rid of all this garbage and allows the cycle to continue functioning. So certainly it's not that I meant uh, oxygen, that oxygen was unimportant, it was just kind of the analogy that works in my mind that, oh, it's kind of like a garbage truck and it gets rid of all this junk. Anyway, I hope that was uh, helpful for you guys. Thanks again. Bye-bye.